Hi, Katie. This is Jerry Stonger with Preferred Inspection Services. We're at 25632 Paseo La Cresta, and it's just giving you a quick review of the home inspection report and the items we found. Very clean home. Uh, really didn't find too many issues, so I think you'll be happy with that. I will send the report over to you later this afternoon, and if you have any questions on those items, I'd be happy to answer them. Uh, I'll give you the big, big rundown of the items I did find. Not too much. Uh, the major components of the home look really good. Uh, we don't check the roof, but we look for signs of any roof issues as far as leaks or stains inside the attic, and I didn't find any. So in really good shape there. The attic is actually very clean. Looks like they added some insulation uh, in the past, so there's new fiberglass insulation, um, loose fill insulation, and well as some fiberglass panels giving a, a excellent amount of insulation in the attic and helping with your heating and cooling costs. The forced air unit or heating and cooling are all working really good. They changed the ductwork when they changed that. Those units are about 17 years old each, which are not old at all. They're about half life on them, both heating and air conditioning. Again, getting really good temperature change out of that. Uh, water heater is in good shape. That's only about three years old. And I'm gonna switch from my view to the direct view of some of these items. Um, again, water heater is only about three years old. Forced air unit about uh, 17, but in really good shape. The return air filter, which is down here under this cover, is new. Um, you'll wanna have that filter checked every three months, six months, depending on how much you're using heating and air. If you're not using it all that much, once a year is just fine. Again, it's new now, so um, again, that I'm sorry. And then the forced air unit itself is actually installed only about nine years ago. It's the air conditioning unit. It's a little bit older, um, but in good shape. And both, again, getting good temperature change. Bedrooms both look good. Ceiling fans are working good. You've got uh, wall remotes in this bedroom. One bedroom, the other bedroom has a handheld remote um, just want to make sure that doesn't disappear during when they start packing, but um, ceiling fans are working good for both bedrooms. We've got smoke alarms in both bedrooms. These are unfortunately non-compliant smoke alarms. Uh, they only have an alkaline battery in them, which now is required to have a 10-year sealed battery so they don't chirp in the middle of the night and then you end up taking the batteries out making them inoperable. Uh, carbon monoxide alarm here at the hallway. There's also a combination smoke alarm, carbon monoxide alarm in the hallway on the ceiling. Uh, master bathroom or the, the main bathroom of the hallway is in good shape. Toilet secure, tub and shower in good shape. Uh, sinks in great shape, no leaks under the sink. The GFCI receptacle here, if you're not familiar with GFCIs, they provide protection against electrocution around water sources. You have outlets in the garage too that are also under that same protection. If for some reason you get lose power in the garage outlets, this will be a reset. The red button there will be a reset um, again in the main bathroom. Uh, your attic access is right in with the entrance to the hallway. There's a pocket door here uh, which is operable in good shape. Uh, to seal off the hallway if you'd like. The powder bath, uh, which is only a half bathroom, is in good shape. There's a GFCI receptacle there that's independent of the one in the main bathroom. Um, you'll see a little panel here in the bathroom next to the toilet. That's just for access to the gas line, electrical connections, and the dryer duct for the laundry. Um, but it's, that's its only purpose, no, no issues there at all. Toilet's secure and in good shape. You don't have an exhaust fan in this bathroom because uh, it doesn't have a shower or tub. Uh, going out into the kitchen area, I ran a short cycle on the dishwasher. That's working well, draining properly. Sink's in good shape. Garbage disposal's working good. That garbage disposal switch is here as well as a light up above in the skylight. You'll see another GFCI protective receptacle there, which is for the countertop outlets here in the kitchen. Cabinets look really good. Uh, looks like a Corian or other solid surface type. Countertop is in great shape. 
The oven is working good. Cooktop burners are good. This is all gas. Microwave is working. Couple of concerns there. Uh, number one is the height from the top of the stove to the underside of the microwave. Uh, that's typically supposed to be 24 inches or 30 inches when you have a plastic microwave like this. Rarely do I see that comply, but the concern is if you let grease build up on the underside or if that's not cleaned uh, and you get a flare up on the stove, it can actually ignite that grease and melt that plastic very quickly. So there's some concerns there, but it's not really to relocate the microwave, that just be really diligent about cleaning that if you have any tenants that you'd want to remind them of that. Um, this microwave is, has a built-in exhaust fan. Unfortunately, this type is what's called a direct vent exhaust. It's meant to have a duct to the outside, which we don't have. There's no openings in the cabinet either. Uh, so what's happening is that when the exhaust fan is on, it's being, the air is being compressed from the top of the microwave to the underside of the cabinet. Eventually that will burn out that fan and right now you're not getting any exhaust. Typically in condominiums this opens up and you have a recirculating type action here. But that would be on a different type of microwave unfortunately to get that to work you'd have to replace the microwave. Uh, I don't know if the refrigerator is staying. Everything looks good there. I'm not sure if there's, it looks like there's a water supply line back there. Um, and then pantry area looks good. Uh, you've got a operable skylight that opens here. The remote is here and that is working. The second remote that was here was for the patio cover, which I could not get to operate. And that might be an operator error, so um, something may want to address with the current owner. Uh, but again, I could not get that to operate. The balcony surface, I don't know if this is HOA responsibility or homeowner responsibility. You've got a couple of cracks you can see in the deck surface. That will eventually lead to leaks down below. And I did see some stains in the garage, which I'll show you in a second very minor and i don't know if that's an active leak but it's something you want to keep an eye on air conditioning unit like i said uh it's from 2004 so that was replaced at a different time than the furnace or the forced air unit in the closet uh, but again getting good temperature change out of that windows and outlets are all good in all rooms uh, electrical outlets i should say windows are all single pane aluminum you got a couple of minor drywall cracks um, up here you can see here very common for this area um, and because you have vaulted ceilings it makes it even more prevalent uh, but not a major structural issue stairwell you're always going to have cracks like that too in big stairwells again not a major structural issue uh, minor settling on the entry door we have a deadbolt that has it's keyed both sides it's called a dual cylinder it's actually a safety concern. Uh, the fire department does not like to see those. If the key was out and there was a fire, they don't want you to have to go looking for the key. They want you to be able to get out in an emergency. Door from the house of the garage, solid core, self-closing, uh, weather strip all the way around. That's all as part of the fire safety requirements, which that meets. Garage, you'll see the small stain next to the light bulb. Again, I do not know if that is active. It's dry right now, but we haven't had any rain or any other source of water to uh, see if that's an active leak. Garage is in good shape. It's a fairly new garage door and opener, which are both working good. Uh, and then, let's see, I'll show you the utilities real quick, just so you know where they are. This will all be in the report as well. Main water shut off that white handle being your shutoff valve water pressure is good you're right at about 60 pounds per square inch which is normal you have a gas meter closet if you ever smelled gas in an emergency you'd want to shut this valve off outside which is shutting off the whole building which is the right thing to do and then the main electrical panel which is in a closet here i'm going to head back upstairs to finish show you the electrical sub panel which is all your individual circuit breakers just so you know where that's at which is in the bathroom the main bathroom uh, they typically don't install those in the bathrooms anymore 
for safety reasons. It's not required to relocate that. I just note that if you had to uh, turn on or off any of the circuit breakers, just make sure there is no water on the floor for obvious reasons. But uh, your panel is here. That's all your individual circuit breakers. Again, it's behind the door, the main bathroom. That's about it. I will put this all in the report and get it over this afternoon. If you have any questions, let me know. Pleasure working with you. Have a good day.